All right. EOC review term number 14, Articles of Confederation. So after the United States declared its independence from England, we had to come up with a form of government. Not surprisingly, we wanted to come up with a form of government that was as different from the British monarchy as possible. And so rather than creating a government that would put a lot of the power in the hands of a king or monarch or chief executive, um, we chose the opposite. We placed pretty much all the power in the hands of the states, which is why it's called a confederation type of government. Um, we even took so much power away from the national government that there was no national executive or judicial branch. The only branch of the national government under the Articles of Confederation uh, was the legislative branch. And even the legislative branch had a really difficult time making laws. They had some provisions in place that said that like nine out of the 13 states had to approve a law before it could be passed, which is obviously more than just a simple majority. Uh, it was really difficult to amend. All 13 states had to agree to amend the articles. Um, lots of obvious weaknesses, including whoops, including the fact that um, the Articles of Confederation government couldn't tax at the national level, uh, which meant that it was really tough to have any money to do anything. Um, some other obvious weaknesses just stemmed from the fact that the national government didn't have enough power to really do much of anything. And so if you could sum up the weaknesses of the articles um, into one statement, it would be that the national government was simply too weak to be effective. But again, the people wanted a weak national government because they felt like the strong national government under the British monarchy was taking away their individual rights and freedoms. So the Articles of Confederation really only lasted from like 1781-ish to 1787. So we're talking less than 10 years. Rough go for the Articles of Confederation.